We'll look at the state of security of Niger on the breakfast. Thank you for staying with us as we have a global security expert who joins the conversation, Dixon Osaji. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right, then. Well, our nation is going through challenges, especially on security, and these challenges are temporary and do not define us. We are not defined by the greatness of Nigerian people, or we are defined by the greatness of Nigerian people in their strength, ingenuity, and resilience, as exemplified by the quality of recipients of today's award. We shall overcome all the challenges. The time is coming where we shall look at this period in retrospect and give thanks to the Most High for the stormy waters we have weathered through and triumph that we have recorded over the challenges that look so huge and very gigantic. Uh, these are the words of the Minister of Interior, Raoul Varegbashola, as he spoke during the presentation of award for the best minister for 2022 at the 10th edition of the Heroes of Democracy Award, Africa in Abuja. Well, is our security challenge a temporary situation? In the northern part of the country, the north is to be very precise, the Islamic group Boko Haram has waged a bloody insurgency against the country for the past 13 years. And an estimated 35,000 people have been killed with over 3 million people displaced by the conflict while in the southeast. Unknown gunmen have continued to target government buildings and security personnel, destroying lives and properties and destabilizing the economy. While the fear of terrorist attacks have spread across the entire country and mostly in the southwest in part of Nigeria, with the militants being dominant in the south-south, I mean, with all the crimes and criminality dominating our space, we have Dixon Orge Osaji, who's a global security expert, uh, as he was rightly introduced. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. So I'd like to go straight to it. I mean, the statement that was made by Raouf Aregbeshola. Do you agree okay. with him that uh, this is just a, a temporary situation? Well, those, those are his words. Thank you for having me. Good morning. I, I, I read his statements on papers, and uh, he's a Nigerian. He has right uh, right, right to work, and he has rights to his own views. Uh, when you say the nation is facing uh, security challenges and those challenges are temporary, then you need to let us know when we are going to leave the temporary situation and return back to normal. Because if you don't leave the temporary situation and return back to normal, then the challenges might be permanent. You know, let me take, for example, the issue of Afghanistan. Afghanistan has been suffering from insecurity, terrorism, insurgency for so many years, since 1996, if I'm, if I'm right. And when the USA struck Afghanistan after the uh, uh, 2001 uh, World Trade Center bombardment by uh, 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 Al Qaeda, uh, the, uh, the Americans took over Afghanistan for 20 good years. And immediately they pulled out from Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban uh, took over power within, within a few days uh, from, from the uh, government of uh, uh, Afghanistan. So that tells you that terrorism. When it's being bet betted, sometimes it could be permanent, sometimes it could be forever, sometimes it could be till eternity, because it is an ideological driven war. And if we want to go by the words of Arab Beshola, I disagree with him that the uh, issue we are facing is uh, uh, temporary. This is not all about divine protection or divine intervention. This is all about putting things in place, strategies in place, for us to take a departure from this temporary mode of insecurity to a stable state. If we don't, we only have two options now, to go back to our normal state of life or we remain uh, uh, in that temporary position and we migrate to permanent position. But God forbid, if we have effective leadership in place, they will be able to tell us what and what they're going to do. Like the 2023 election is coming. I could see the uh, inferior everywhere. People are jubilating. Some are emotionally pushing for their candidates. Some are uh, strategically and uh, politically pushing for their candidates. But for me, any person that is coming to govern Nigeria at this state must let us know their security plan. How are you going to take us from this deadly stage? Like you rightly stated in your introduction, uh, you talked about the uh, security challenges we have faced in the south east, southwest, northeast, northwest. Bringing all these security challenges together is classified as multi-dimensional 
security threat. So as a country, we are suffering from multidimensional security threat, and the only way for us to resolve this multidimensional security threat is for us to have leaders who are free from nepotism, leaders who are free from religious uh, brutality, who are free from uh, corruption brutality and corruption genocide. Because what has led the to this stage is corruption, bad leadership, and bad political system. We we'll must get Nigeria right again and take us from this temporary state to a normal state. Then our leaders must be held accountable and go back on the drawing board and bring back Nigeria. Uh, uh, Raul Ferrebeshola is the Minister of Interior uh, of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria. So he is um, one of the players as far as uh, keeping Nigeria secure is concerned. So his words matter. Um, in, in the light of any, in any security conversation, a conversation about security. But in this case, um, we cannot ignore the fact that he's been given an award, uh, which signals that he's doing and performing well uh, as um, Minister of Interior. In fact, he was given um, uh, the best minister of the year 2022. I mean, so for, for him to say, to receive such an award, and to say uh, that, you know, the security challenges are temporary, uh, it may indicate that he's doing something well. I mean, he's been talked about, especially as far as the um, attacks on prison facilities in the country, correctional centers in the country are concerned, the escape of prisoners and all that, those who are freed by Boko Haram, we can look at Kuji prison, for instance, and internal security in the country. Um, what is your, your assessment of Arabe Shola's impact and performance in this conversation of security as a minister of the interior? of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Excellent question. You see, um, when the modern policy system was formed in 1829, uh, the founder of the modern day policing, Sir Robert Pierce, the policing system we are practicing in Nigeria, Africa, and around the globe, with the exception of American policing system, because the American policing system started from the slave patrol you know, in the early days. The, when, when the slave leaves uh, their masters, they, will, they have some guards that go and fetch back those slaves. So that was how the American policing started from slave patrol. Why the British policing system started from uh, uh, the United Kingdom by introduced by Sir Robert Pierce. And he said, he said the absence of crime best proof the effectiveness of policing. That is to say that if you want to draw your measurement, if you want to draw your victory from any given situation, the absence of crime. Now. You will say, Dixon, are you telling me that crime can be eliminated permanently in this country or all over the world? I will tell you for free, crime can never be eliminated till the end of time. The best country in the world can never eliminate crime. But crime should be reduced as low as reasonable, reasonably acceptable. Acceptable in the sense that, for example, let's take Lagos. If Lagos is uh, going through crime rate, maybe you hear about crime one time in three months, once in five months, once in six months. It's reasonably acceptable. But if Lagos begin to experience crime every minute, every day, every time, it's not acceptable. That is what that notion means. Uh, means. So coming back to your question, I don't think Arek Bechola deserves that award. He is the Minister of Interior. He should tell us what is happening. He should let us know what are the strategic plans he has in place. What is the ministry doing in the area of our youths? What is the ministry doing in the area of al What is the ministry doing in the area of our national borders? What is the ministry doing in the area of deployment of our national of our security forces? Yes, Nigeria is a place where individuals can, people sit and can bag our world in Nigeria uh, because the screening system uh, is not credible enough. I say that with all, uh, all, 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 all honesty because for you to give that man an award, you must tell Nigerians what has he achieved. The high speed of security in Nigeria is worrisome. Our people that were attacked in the train stations are still in captivity over 60 days of state counting. A lot of Nigerians cannot travel by road, we cannot travel by air, we cannot even travel by sea. I don't know if we are going to introduce a fourth system of travel, of transportation, which is disappearance and reappearance. If that is possible, I'm ready to disappear and reappear in my destination. Then what is it doing as well in the area of national orientation agency? Our people are dying every day. Our soldiers are dying every day. Our police, our police are dying every day. The painful part of it is this. Our soldiers are trained so hard, but yet are, are dying so cheaply. You can't pass a soldier through the fire and fury of training. As a former soldier, I know what it is to, I know what it is in making of a soldier. I know what it is in passing through the fire and fury of military training. I know what it is for you to put your life on the line to serve your nation. 
Having taken that report of allegiance, some criminal elements, some unnecessary human beings, flying bikes, taking over territories, killing our soldiers, killing our police, it's not acceptable. Our so Nigeria is over a nation over 200 million. We have the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian Air Force, the Nigerian Police, we have the DSS, we have over 25 security agencies in Nigeria. Yet, some group of criminals are taking victory in our territory. They are holding Nigeria hostage, they are holding our uh, people hostage. I don't think I should have deserve that award. They should return that award back to the, uh, to the governing body that issued that award and come back to the drawing board and not just West. In Nigeria, we are good in West. Don't tell me we are going through a temporary situation. Tell me the strategy or the tactical plan in place. I don't need your tactical plan. Tell us the, the, the procedures in place you want to adopt. What are your political strategies to bring back Nigeria? What are, are your economic, economic, economic strategies to bring back Nigeria? What are your tactical strategies to bring back Nigeria? What are your uh, 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 advancement strategy you want to bring back, administrative strategy you want to bring back Nigeria? Uh, when we talk about insurgency, it involves around multi-dimensional components, multi-components, because most people say the military might alone will eliminate terrorism. Nowhere in the world the military has taken victory in terrorism. If you don't bring in all the components in place, political components, economic components, strategic components, and administrative components to address this holistic, to address this menace holistically, Nigeria will continue to flourish in the area of insecurity. Right. I do not jealous as a word. But I tell you, there are some awards that should be rejected because the blood of Nigeria is very, very essential. No Nigerian blood is deserved to be wasted by this criminal element. They are in our territory, they are in the government space. Our government knows where they are because they are not living in the space, they are not living in, in the moon, they are living in the territory of Nigeria. So every president has sworn to the oath of allegiance that the topmost priority of governance is the protection of lives. We All right, must Dixon. look at the protection of as the priority. Okay, um, Dixon, a great insight that you have actually brought this morning, uh, looking at the state of security of our nation and juxtaposing that with the thoughts of uh, the Minister of Interior, Raoul Varek Bashola. But I'd like to ask you, as a global security analyst, do you think that the situation, our security situation, it's because uh, of the kind of security architecture that we run as a country, or is... On the other hand, um, the fact that those who are calling the shorts do not have what it takes. We're talking about the political will now to ensure the protection of lives and property. Uh, thank you very much. That, that's a very intelligent question. Uh, first of all, let me start. Uh, uh, let me answer your question from the policy point of view. Uh, presently, if you look at the ethnography of Nigeria, uh, Nigeria is a country of over 200 million people. Uh, we have a landmark of about 923,000 square kilometers. We also have about 371 tribes, over uh, 520 languages, and over 250 ethnic groups. That alone is a security threat. And you have a country with over 250 tribes. There is no unity of purpose. That is one of the major problems we have. And that tells you that the amalgamation of the amalgamation, that is number one. Then, from the policing point of view, uh, we are practicing a centralized policing system. Uh, no country survive. A great nation like Nigeria should not be practicing a centralized policing system. Centralized, centralized policing system in the sense that our, our, police, our police officers are taking orders from Abuja. If anything happens in Lagos State now, the state governor cannot even give the commissioner of police order. The commissioner of police, when he gets that order from the state governor, he gets approval from Abuja. That is centralized policing system. And that is not the system uh, Americans are practicing. We borrowed our constitution from the American uh, government, from, the, from, from America. Why can't we borrow the uh, security system the Americans are practicing? The Americans are practicing decentralized policy system from the federal level to the state level and the community level. That is to talk about the federal policy system, the state policy system, and community policy system. These are the three foundations that the Nigerian uh, American government are practicing their policy system and it's working for the American people. Now, as a country in Nigeria, 2023 is around the corner. We need a leader that will come and decentralize our policing system. Nigerian police needs to be decentralized. Decentralized in the sense that it is a philosophy. People think uh, when you decentralize the policing system, the Nigerian police will no longer exist. No. Decentralizing the Nigerian police system is a philosophical system in the sense that the, uh, the community policy system reports to the state policy system, the state policy system reports to the federal policy system. However, all these 
policy, uh, policy system, the community policy, state policy, will all be autonomous. We will have power of autonomy. They will act on their own, take instruction from their state command, and act swiftly in any given situation. So that is one of the problems we are facing in Nigeria. Police, our policing system is highly vulnerable. Then go to our military. I tell you for free, the Nigerian military has given us good names. They bring a victory to this great nation. I remember when the Syria Alone War broke out, then my father was still in the military. They were the first set of soldiers that went to Syria Alone in 1991. Out of about 735 soldiers that went to that battle, they didn't lose any, they didn't lose any, they didn't lose any soldier in that battle. I think one of the soldiers died of malaria or typhoid, the other one died of uh, dysentery. I can't even remember. But here yeah, you see our soldiers dying like chicken there in the Nigerian space. Why? Simply because the Nigerian military have failed to understand that we are in a worse situation. In any given situation, if the enemy takes any human lives or takes human lives that exceed, takes the number of human lives that takes, exceed 999, it is a worse situation. So Nigeria is in a worse situation. The Nigerian military must have act this as an internal war situation. Where are our commandos? Some people were kidnapped in the Cardinal train stations. We are watching, keep watching, they are crying, they beat them up every day. Nigerian so government are saying that to send the commandos Dixon, to go and rescue us. Dixon, are you saying? Dixon, are you, because over time, uh, Dixon, because we're really out of time, I mean, I wish we had more time uh, to, to speak with you on this particular subject. But we know that your colleagues and other security uh, proponents have said that if you look at the body language of this government, because government responsibility across the board is that lives and properties are protected. And some people have argued that there's no political will. I mean, there's no will from the government, you know, to solve the issue of security that we're faced with, not necessarily the kind of structure that we have, you know, the security architect you have mentioned, the different agencies that we have. So it's not really, some people are not saying that it's the problem of a structure, but it's a problem of the will of the political class to end, you know, uh, not necessarily end, but maybe reduce it to a minimum, uh, a minimum uh, rate. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you, like you rightly said, there was a House of Assembly members that made mention of some billions of naira that the Nigerian uh, military has been, uh, been spending over these years. And in his words, he said, he said very clearly that some of these people are making money from this insecurity because it is a money-making venture. Uh, well, for me, I think one, our security architecture and our security design is very highly porous. Then secondly, we don't have the political will. If we have the political will, uh, it will be very, very clear. Like what's transpired, uh, a, a, an American citizen was captured just behind our borders here, the Nigerian Niger borders. The American government sent in commandos. They flew in from the United States of America, landed in the neighboring country, planned uh, mission rescue, uh, mission rescue uh, operations, and they landed into the terrorist camp and eliminated all those guys and rescued that American citizen. That is a country I want to see Nigeria be. We need to place priority on human lives. They're here every day and now our citizens are being captured on the road. No rescue mission, no uh, invasion of the enemy camps. Everybody is just doing what they like. No coordination between the Nigerian Army, Navy, Air Force, Police. No proper coordination, no uh, intelligence guardian because one of the problems we have is also intelligence in the session of a political way. We don't have effective intelligence uh, components and counter-intelligence components. How will you plan an attack against the Nigerian state and you succeed without the intelligence gathering uh, such information and forestalling such attack? A lot of problems we are facing in Nigeria. May God help us. Wow. Thank you very much, Dixon Osage. I wish you had more time with you, especially to uh, take your thoughts on uh, other issues of importance, like um, uh, the resignation of uh, about 200 soldiers from the army. Uh, which army is oh, yeah, 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 is, is that normal? Because the army is saying it's it's normal, although Nigerians, some people raise the eyelids, but is that usual? It's, very it's, very quickly. It's, it's normal. Like when I resigned from the army in 2003, that's 19 years ago, uh, the chief of staff was surprised. Ah, why is this soldier going? The, the reason why I resigned from the army then was that it's so demotivating. I, I spent some number of years in Bakasi Peninsula and you know, when you put your life on the line, you need to be well paid. I think then they were giving us peanuts. I said, hey, I don't think this system is worth dying for. That was why I voluntarily resigned. When I saw the list, I saw some of my classmates that were in that list. And I placed a call. I said, why? They said they are not enjoying the system anymore because their colleagues are dying so cheaply. So for me, I think that list is not normal. The Nigerian Army needs to look into motivation, tactical operation, and their strategies as well, and ensure that their soldiers are not trained so hard and allowing them to die cheaply. And also, their soldiers will not be trained so hard and just leave the system. 
Thank you. And, uh, enjoy their lives. Thank you. Dixon Osage, it it's been a thrill having you. We look forward to having you again soon. Uh, on the breakfast uh, for more analysis. Uh, but that's the size of our package for tonight. It's been an interesting one uh, with interesting conversations right here on the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, I like the fact that he, <laughs> not necessarily, but he talked about soldiers should not be allowed to enjoy their life. It feels like soldiers are not enjoying their lives <laughs> while they are, you know, at the forefront of it. But like Kofi had mentioned, this is where we call it a wrap. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time and we look forward to having you join the conversation tomorrow. Seven o'clock up until this time. We join the newsroom at nine. Uh, for the news. I am Messi Boko. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Have a great day. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning.